Hi friends! Today is going to be my wrap up for the month of March. In the month of March I read a total of eight books for a total of 3,723 pages. As always, I will start with the lowest rated book, go to the highest rated book, and spoiler alert, I had a perfect book this month. Wait to find out what it is. Also, as always, I will link in the description box below all of my reviews on Goodreads if you want to know any of my fuller broad scheme thoughts than what you get here. I'm a little more eloquent in my wordage when I'm writing versus spewing words. The first book that we're going to talk about is Welcome to Lagos by Chibundu Onuzo. This book is about a group of people in Nigeria and kind of follows like a slice of life, a couple of months in the life of this specific group of people. Some are ex-military, some are ex-rebels, some are um, some political people and it just follows how they all kind of end up in this place together. I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. I read this for the fiction book club at my local bookstore. I really enjoyed the characters. I liked the Nigerian viewpoint. I liked getting a different viewpoint from my own and I really liked that aspect of it but it was really slow. I didn't really care for the plot that was there. It was so hard to read not just as a physical book but even as an audiobook because I listened to the audiobook as well. Trying to understand what they were even saying was very difficult and I, I get the, the concept that it was that way and it was intended to be realistic but it was just kind of lost on me because I couldn't understand what they were even talking about half the time. I like some of the themes and I like some of the characters but just overall it just didn't really work for me. Next was And Then There Are None by Agatha Christie. This book is set on an island and basically is a murder mystery because it's Agatha Christie and follows a group of 10 people on an island and bodies start dropping and they're trying to figure out who the killer is. This was the group book for Beautifully Bookish Bethany's Patreon book club and so I read it for that. I gave it a 2.75 out of 5 stars. I was very confused about who the characters were throughout the story, uh, especially at the beginning when there are 10 of them and it just was kind of confusing. There's so it's eight men and two women so it was confusing on who was who and who had done what and why and so that aspect of it was a little weird. Once it got further into the story and I kind of had more time to sit with the characters it was a little better but still a little weird and still hard to keep up with which character was which. What I did really like about the story was the idea of who the killer was and why they were doing what they were doing. I think the reveal at the end is well worth it. I definitely think that the thought process and the themes behind the book are great. This book was originally titled as a racial slur and I highly recommend you go down the Wikipedia rabbit hole for this book. Uh, it's a doozy. There's definitely some information in there uh, as to the original title of the book and what the original setting of the book was and the original poem and then there were none. This is uh, it's interesting to say the very least. Uh, overall I thought the book was pretty meh. It was okay. We also did a, a group watch along of the movie. It's a mini series, it's two parts. It stars Aiden Turner. It was amazing because it's Aiden Turner in a towel. I mean girl I can't complain. There's actually a scene where <laughs> they're like there's very few of them left. Uh, one of the the girls you know opens her door and Aiden Turner's character like once in the room and she lets him in and one of the other girls in the group was like oh my god why would you let him in and I'm like did you see him in the towel? I mean why wouldn't you let him in? I mean sure you might die but you might have fun first I'm just saying I don't know. It was a good time basically is where I'm going with that. The next book is The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson. This is the third and final book in the Remnant Chronicles. This series follows Leah who is a princess that is in an arranged or is arranged to be married married to the prince of a rival kingdom 
and rather than marry him, Leah runs away on her wedding day and tries to escape the royal life and having to marry this man that she's never met. In her running away, she is followed by the prince she's supposed to marry and an assassin from another rival kingdom. She kind of has a romance with both of them and throughout the first book you don't know which one's which one and the series is really good overall. It has really good world building so highly recommend. I give this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I buddy read this with Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany. I loved the world building and the politics and the characters in this are so wonderful. Prince Jackson is a dick but outside of that everybody else is wonderful. This book in particular the pacing was off. It was a lot of build up. I mean it's a it's a chunky baby. It was a lot of build up for a very small final battle which was kind of weird. The aspect of having all of that build up and all of the planning and everything and then it just being like a couple of paragraphs, chapters. It was very short. I do like that it was shown from multiple perspectives. Not only the action in the battle but the people outside of the battle and what they were experiencing during the battle. I liked that aspect of it but it just didn't really work for me for the pacing aspect of it. I loved this series overall. Highly recommend. The second book especially is superb. Again wonderful read these. There is a sister series to these. I think it's Dance of Thieves. I think it's the first book. There's more from this world and I plan to hopefully read those soon. Next is In a Mirror by Emily Bourne. This book follows two twin sisters, Charlie and Brittany. They are very different and they aren't best friends like you see from most twins in books. They are very different characters and this book is like a fun, dramatic, beachy read that follows just kind of like a slice of life. It follows their, them trying to navigate the social settings of their high school and their parents' divorce and moving forward from that and just everything that that can mean for their family. I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. Emily is an author tuber and a friend of mine so I will link her in the description box below as well as in the cards if you'd like to check out Emily's channel. I definitely think this delivers on being a dramatic beachy teen read. It is all of that. I love the character growth. I think the journey that we follow Brittany and Charlie on throughout the book is superb. The view that we get of teenage life was very realistic. Felt like you were in high school. It kind of gave me high school flashbacks. Very realistic and I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I didn't love all of the characters. Like the mean girl characters were not my jam. Though I feel like that was part of the point is that there's mean girls and you're supposed to hate them but I just didn't like them at all. I could have lived without them but then the book wouldn't be dramatic like it is. I think one of the biggest turnoffs of this book for me was the fat shaming of a specific character and while I know that that's not the viewpoint of the author it's to show how mean the mean girls really are. Again it gave me high school flashbacks and it's just not something that I particularly want to read about. Um, if it doesn't bother you then that's great. For me it's just is it's not something that I want to read. It's not something I want out of my books. I do plan to continue on in this series. Again, I really enjoyed the writing style and the characters and the character growth, so I will be continuing on. Next is The Ghosts of Shadow Market by Cassie Clare and Friends, or Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, Maureen Johnson, Kelly Link, and Robin Wasserman. Cassie Clare and Friends, as I always say. This is a short story collection all from the viewpoint of Jim Carstairs, throughout different points in his life and basically follows him at different shadow markets during the course of his life. <laughs> I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. It is a good mix of different stories from different time periods. Some were really good, some were okay. I loved seeing all of our favorite characters again. That's always one of my favorite things about these bind ups is you get short little snippets of characters that we love. I think this is a great lead up for The Last Hours and The Wicked Powers, um, which are the next two series that I think are releasing. Well, The Last Hours is out now and then The Wicked Powers will be coming out. Yeah. <laughs> 
Cassie Clare. Uh, the Shadowhunters world is crazy and I, I feel like if you're not a Shadowhunters fan it's really hard to keep up with. So the next book I do not currently have my physical copy of. I have loaned it out. It is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in The Last Hours. It follows the children of the characters from the Infernal Devices. So Jem, Tessa, Will, Charlotte, Henry, those characters, it's their children. And it follows them on this journey of figuring out who they are and having grown up in a world where demons aren't really a thing. They're faced with a new type of demon that no one has ever really seen before and they have to figure out how to battle that. And it involves a really a good core group of friends. I feel like if you are a Harry Potter fan who loved the Marauders, this is the Marauders story that you have all been waiting for. It's Marauders inspired for sure. Though to be fair, I believe Cassie Clare's Shadowhunters book started out as Harry Potter fan fiction, so not surprised. Just loved it. I uh, gave it a 4. 0.5 out of 5 stars. In the beginning I had a hard time sorting out which of the boys were which because there are like six of them all around the same age. It's a little difficult but not horrible. It got easier as time went on and Cassie's character work is fantastic. If you haven't heard me spew the praises of Cassie Clare I will link in the description box below as well as in the cards my top 10 authors of the last decade video that I filmed at the beginning of this year. Um, the one character that I feel like was the bright spot of this book that we didn't see a lot of and I hope we see more of in the future is Anna Lightwood. She is superb. She is a godsend to this earth. I love her. I loved her from the short story that we see about her in here. Every exquisite thing that we see in here is an Anna story and then what we get of her in Chain of Gold. Fabulous. Love her. Cannot say enough wonderful things about Anna Lightwood. I really enjoyed the plot of, of this book. It was a lot of fun. It was a, a gut punch as Cassie's books always are and I highly recommend the entire series. I cannot wait until the next book. I'm, I'm so stoked. Like <laughs> I love reading about these characters and I just I'm so excited to get to the next one. The next book is Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. This is about a boy who grew up not necessarily in a gang but on the outside of a gang and has always been taught you always get payback. He has these rules that his brother, his older brother has taught him and one of them is you know you always get payback for the people that they take from you. And his older brother is killed due to gun violence and because he's been taught these rules that you should always seek revenge, he decides that he's going to seek revenge. It follows him in the elevator from the top floor to the bottom and on each floor a different ghost gets in the elevator with him and he learns more and more and more about the story as the elevator goes down. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I love the story and the author notes and I read this via audiobook which is narrated by the author Jason Reynolds. The thing in the author's note that I really liked was he talks about how poetry, you know, is meant to make you feel something and that's really the only way to to judge that. And so for me, the rating of this book was more of a, did this poetry make me feel something? Did I learn something from it? Did it do its job? And that is why I rated it five stars because I really, really enjoyed this. I read this as part of the YA fiction book club from my local bookstore. Um, this was the pick for March and April. Again, I really enjoyed this. I really like the story. I like the moral of the story. Could not recommend this enough. It is wonderful. If you can't tell from the 87 awards on the cover. And finally we have arrived at the perfect book. The only book I think I have ever given a 5.25 out of 5 stars which means it did everything perfectly and made me cry. And that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Yeah this one killed me. This is about Evelyn Hugo who was a 50s 60s movie star. In her old age she has reached out to this journalist to tell her her life story. No one really knows the full story of Evelyn Hugo so this is an unprecedented thing and she is ready to go and get the story and you get the story from Evelyn's perspective. Um, it switches back and forth. It tells the story as if it's in present time and then goes back to modern time to tell you what's going on in present day and then they go back. It's very well very well done. I cried so hard. The last 
I don't know, 80 or so pages of this. I just sat here and sobbed the entire time. It was rough. <laughs> Evelyn is not a hero or a good person. She can be an awful person at times, but you still like her and you still root for her and you still want what's best for her. And Monique, who is the modern day journalist, she has a lot of character growth in this. And I think that she is the us from this story. We get to see both the best and worst of Evelyn through Monique. I think Monique grows from that. And I think if you're reading the book and paying attention, you will also grow from that. One of my absolute favorite characters from this book is Harry Cameron. He was magical. I adored him. I adore everything about him. He is just amazing. I typically will direct you to my Goodreads review to get full thoughts, but I do. I had one specific thought about this book that I wanted to read to you directly from my Goodreads review. While this book is about finding out who the love of Evelyn's life is, it's also about understanding that romantic love is not the only kind of love and more importantly it's not the only kind of love that matters. Finding the person who is your other half and knows all of your secrets and is the closest to you of everyone in the world doesn't mean you have to have a romantic relationship with them. The two things do not have to connect to exist and I wish more people could see that. That is one thing that I try to point out in my own writing. I feel like to say that a platonic friendship where you love someone and they know everything about you is any less important than a romantic relationship is a falsehood. I think that you can have a connection with a person who is literally your other half that you never have a romantic relationship with. And I think that is an important distinction that should be brought up more often. I think that especially in YA, which this is not, but especially in YA, we kind of teach teens that a romantic relationship is the only relationship worth having. And that's just not true. And I think we need to focus more on explaining to, to teens and to kids that a friendship is just as important, if not more important, than a romantic relationship. But that's just me. But I think this book does an amazing job of conveying that. And I loved the characters. I loved the plot. I love just the plot twists and turns and everything that this book provided. Again, it was absolute perfection. You all were right because everyone who has read this book has told me that they loved it and they were not wrong. So those are most of the eight books that I read this month. If you have any questions about anything that I read, please feel free to hit me up in the comment section below or on Twitter or on Instagram. Both are linked below. Uh, full reviews linked below. Uh, all kinds of stuff down there for you to peruse. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, bonus videos on the weekends. And if you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you subscribe. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!